Okay, I'm going to spend a few moments talking to you about Wikibooks. What I've got here is a selection of Wikibooks that I've created for all of my modules. Um, and what you're looking at here are printed versions of PDF files. Okay. Now, a Wikibook is essentially a collection of articles from Wikipedia that you can compile into a kind of virtual book. And you can get it into a, the common PDF format and various other formats. But essentially, you end up with an electronic document. And if you look at the other little video clip, it will show, show you one being assembled and um, they're really really useful you know they're fast to assemble they're free to use and they're copyright compliant which is really useful if you're putting things up onto your virtual learning environment for your institution like a lot of staff I try my best for my students um, and sometimes I'll go in and I've got a few lecture notes here from particular lectures on Tesco that's fine and that's useful and I'll often lecture and use a PowerPoint slideshow to give me some structure uh, during the course of the lecture. Okay, this is just some, the printed version of the slides, there's actually about 40 in it. But what I wouldn't have time to do if it worked for Wikibooks is produce kind of bespoke things just for particular lecture topics. Here is Tesco Overview. Okay, this is a Wikibook that I made for a session where I was doing about Tesco and kind of e-commerce and various things to do with Tesco. And I can see here it's about 70 pages, okay? All about Tesco, and I've got in some, some bits about Amazon as well, and the long tail of the supply curve where I wanted to join some things about other issues. The nice thing about these wiki books is you can put in anything you want, so you can have your core topic, okay? And uh, so, for example, for first years, you might put together a free economics primer, okay? But you can add in whatever other topics that you like to do as well. So, they're free to create. They're copyright compliant, which is really useful these days because a lot of institutions get increasingly nervous about that kind of thing. Um, they're very fast to put, put together and you can make your bespoke materials. What's nice as well is they're viewable on a range of devices, so you can view them on laptops, you can view them on iPhones, you can view them on many ebooks. because one of the formats that's offered is the Adobe PDF format and it's a pretty much universally viable format and there's other formats as well that they can be viewed in. You could also, with a little bit of tweaking, make them interactive. Okay? Um, one of the good things about this as well is that because the latest version of the Adobe PDF Reader, um, it's kind of been tweaked and attention has been paid to accessibility issues. Um, you can have the text flow automatically, you can have the text read out to you, you can resize the text. So in that sense it's really good as well. And you can also add notes and things in. So as well as it being a document in the sense of the context of your teaching, you can also actually put interactive elements into the Adobe PDF, which you'll see if you look at the other little demo video. The wiki books are based on sound, academic, pedagogic principles, call it what you will. Basically it's a good structured presentation of information with the option to put some kind of interaction or question in there, whether that's set within the context of the overall module or within the structure of the book itself, okay? And often you'll be doing both, of course. Um, it's not simply spoon-feeding documents because you can put together selective elements and you can put questions in there and of course you can link it and use it with other materials. So it's a great resource. You wouldn't use it in isolation, but as part of a whole barrage of things that you're using, really, really good. Um, as I said, they're shareable, they're copyable, that's all played under the particular license that's provided, so that's really, really useful. Um, and the nice thing is they're not difficult to create. Um, so you can go onto Wikipedia and you can have a look. And if there are gaps there in what you want to do, then one option, of course, is either as an individual or as part of the um, community, is that you might decide you want to make a contribution to fill in some of those gaps in Wikibooks. Because they're editable, you can also put your own contributions into the final books themselves, because you can get it into the PDF or Word format in such a way that you can add additional notes and stuff in, to put your own special things in. If you don't want to contribute to the Wikipedia community, that's fine. So, they're fast, they're free, they're good quality materials, they're a fantastic addition to the normal array of materials that we would use. So, it's not a very flashy project, but it was based on student feedback, you know, it was effective, it's something that other people can copy, um, and really with a lot of emphasis on being, you know, how can we make our resources, how can we make ourselves go further and be used more efficiently, um, with a more emphasis on sort of student feedback and also the pressure that's put on individual staff. Um, these are a really good way to create 
books really quite quickly okay so an economics primer for example you might put together one that's perhaps 40 50 70 pages even longer should you choose to do so and you can do it in a matter of minutes and one of the other good things about them is it's fully referenced as well so all the sources are referenced the generic skills coming in there in terms of referencing and citation and how to interact with materials so um, wiki books I think are a really really useful extra resource something that other people could take up and use certainly my students found them very useful